I'm Billy. I, uh, I'm from Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, and I moved to Toronto, Ontario about eight years ago. Toronto can be a really uh, spiritually tough city to live in. If you were to stand in the subway for one hour and just stand there, I bet you 10 people would bump into you. You can be walking down Young Street, someone will jog by you, a life or death situation, and they are... I'll be sitting on the subway with my girlfriend and 10 minutes will go by and she'll turn to me and she'll say, hey, are you all right? Do you realize you haven't said anything for the last 10 minutes? And I'm just, in my head, I'm going through all these scenarios, and, you know, about this guy bumping into me and all these fear-based scenarios of, uh, you know, confrontation. And these, are, these are people that are not the types that are going out into bars on Friday night, getting drunk and trying to get into a fight with people and say, hey, look what I know, well, look what I can learn. I think that's always been the underlying factor is that you've learned these techniques, but they're not to be used for just uh, a street fight. It's, you're engaging in an art. It really, it builds so much character to train this stuff that uh, the majority at least really grow and, and become very very strong people. This is not a fight. This is, this is a way of life for these people. And the last thing they want to do is be, uh, you know, flexing their muscle, trying to show people that uh, I'm a tough guy. There's, there's really none of that insecurity with any of these fighters. Yeah, I've, I've been in bar fights before. Um, it's nothing that I'm proud of, but um, Just sometimes that kind of energy is floating around. There's something like 3.5 million people here, and when you put that many people in this small of a space, personal space goes right out the window. People will hit you. People will, will bump into you, and not think twice about it. Don't say sorry. And we're Canadians. We say sorry for everything. And I just was wandering in and out of shops, and I walked into this one shop, and there was a flyer up there for Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. It just seems like. It just seems like such a calming thing. I just, uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to give it a shot. Uh, literally translated, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu means the art of gentleness or the art of softness. And it's a martial art um, that really is, is uh, more of a philosophy. Neutralizing the size issue. I mean, you go back, I mean, the oldest story probably anyone would know is David versus Goliath with David winning with a rock. And I think, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu almost showed that, yes, David could beat Goliath in a fight, but he doesn't necessarily need a rock to do so. So it's a, it's a martial art that uh, very much is about, um, in, a, in a sense, peace and, and, uh, and choice. Uh, it was actually on my birthday on the 31st, and uh, our coach came in and he said that Helio Gracie had passed away. And it was a little weird for me because this thing that I found that has what I think made me a better person, the creator of that has passed away. And when Elliot told us, we, we actually, <laughs> as best we knew how, we faced what we thought direction Brazil was in. And we bowed our heads and had a moment of silence. And I felt I wanted to pay my respects. Uh, but I felt like I didn't, I didn't know him enough. Like I, I felt like this guy has really helped me out a lot and I'd like to pay my respects and I didn't know how. I think Elio Gracie is like Babe Ruth was to, to baseball, maybe even Abner Doubleday in that he was credited with inventing baseball, James Naismith with basketball. Elio Gracie is the patriarch of uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and, and as a byproduct, mixed martial arts. He could fight a man who was maybe 50, 75 pounds heavier than him, and it wasn't so much inflicting damage on the person that was bigger than him, it was taking those strengths and taking them away from him to neutralize an opponent. You know, it might take three and a half hours, but the smaller man will defeat the bigger man. Over his 30 or 40 year uh, career fighting, I think he lost one or two matches. When you look at, when the book is written on Helio Gracie, I mean, he created such a different dynamic to what fighting was and what people perceive fighting to be. Without Elio Gracie, there probably would not be mixed martial arts as we know it today, because as you follow down the line, uh, the Gracie's bringing the UFC to uh, North America in 1993 that, uh, yeah, he, he made everyone else get that much better. And I find that fascinating that here's a guy that 
developed his own fighting style to help himself and make his weaknesses his strengths. It's, it's really unexplainable at times, but it incorporates everything necessary for our very existence. It's survival. As everything is, it's about our kind of personal journey, our personal growth, how we meet a challenge. That fear that you maybe had when you were, when I was younger, um, it just kind of disappears. You know, it's, it was more that I was projecting my insecurities. Elio spoke about, um, you know, the guy who starts fights in the street does so because he doesn't believe in himself, and that's what his jujitsu does. It helps you believe in yourself. My instructor Elliot says that. 99 times out of 100, any time that you're in some sort of a confrontation, it's because your ego has you there, and um, there's no need to be there. You know, you can try 20 different ways to talk yourself out of any of those situations. It looks actually at first keeping ourselves safe by controlling space. You know, I made the, I made the decision myself. You know, for the next year, anytime anything happens, this is it. I'm going to talk myself out of it 20 different ways. And just that decision alone has, has settled my mind down quite a bit. It's kind of just funny how a 150-pound Cape Retner who grew up on a dirt road would have so much to be grateful for for a 95-year-old 150-pound Brazilian. <laughs> As silly as it might sound, I feel taller.